Hello, friends. So today was supposed to be the last day of our Fall Classic sale, but I have good news. I'm extending it through the month of November, so you can still get a raised sports t-shirt for 40% off the regular price. All you have to do is go to raisedsports.com, pick yourself out a shirt, enter the special code CLASSIC at checkout, and you'll get a nice discount. It's a great way to support the podcast and have a high-quality t-shirt designed by our friends at Cool Fire Studios. Thank you so much. Now, on with the show. Well, he's like, hey, like, I want you to meet this guy. He plays magic and also plays baseball. Like, I think you'd like him. So I was like, cool. So uh, I drive down to Puyallup from Lakewood, and I walk into this attic and introduce myself to Kyle, and then we just sit and talk for like an hour. You know, we talk about baseball and magic. Every young baseball player dreams of taking the field in the major leagues. But even the best find out quickly that it takes more than dreaming to get there. It takes talent, hard work, and even a little bit of luck. There's times where I've, you know, kind of had things planned in my head and, like, expected them to go a certain way, um, and they, <laughs> they normally don't. Welcome to Season 2 of the Raised Sports Podcast, in which we'll go deep into the minor leagues and follow a prospect as he works towards what he hopes will be a shot at the big leagues. The organization's going to test me, and if I can hold up, then great. If not, then they'll, they'll, uh, they'll find somebody else, and that's kind of the nature of the business. He'll endure long bus trips and short paychecks. He'll tinker with his game as the competition gets tougher and he'll battle through the aches and pains that come with a long season. It's just part of the game. I mean, playing, playing a little bit banged up, I mean, you're never going to feel 100%, you know, in a 140-game season. And along the way, he'll constantly look for any edge to improve his game, to impress, to find a way to advance up the minor league ladder. When I'm my best is when I'm not thinking too much and I'm just out, out there to embarrass the hitter. For the rest of my career, just out to show the world. And a swing and a miss, strike three. Pumps the fastball past Benson up in the zone. Episode 5, Baseball and Magic. Everybody knows Field of Dreams, right? It's a classic. Kevin Costner carves a baseball diamond out of his Iowa cornfield, and magical stuff starts happening. One character in the film is Moonlight Graham, played by Burt Lancaster. Graham was a career minor leaguer. He got one inning in the major leagues, but he only got to play in the field. And he shares with Costner's character, Ray Kinsella, that all he ever wanted was one plate appearance against a big league pitcher. And is there enough magic out there in the moonlight to make this dream come true? What would you say if I said yes? I think I'd actually believe you. It's a wonderful scene in a truly enjoyable film, and it speaks to the romance and magic that the game holds over our consciousness as America's pastime. But that's really more Hollywood than it is reality. After all, baseball isn't really about magic at all. Cole Uvila knows this better than anybody. He knows that it's about skill and talent, about hard work and attention to detail, and it's very much about science. You can't turn a shortstop into a pitcher with magic. As the 2019 season headed into the All-Star break, things were going great for Cole. His Down East Wood Ducks had dominated the Carolina League, winning 50 of their 70 games to take the first half crown and clinch a playoff berth. Cole had finished strong as well. He had worked on the issues that had been bothering him, his command, his pitch selection, and had some good momentum heading into mid-June. In his last seven appearances before the break, he'd allowed just one earned run across 10 innings, striking out 12. But now, as he headed home to Seattle for a brief break, it wasn't going to be a vacation. He was excited to see his fiancée, Kayla, and spend some time with her, but he had some work to do as well. He was returning to driveline baseball to get back on their mound and fine-tune some things. Of all the different factors that had played a role in Cole reaching this point in his career, 
Perhaps nothing, aside from his own determination, had had a bigger impact. The connection between coal and driveline really goes back to the beginning for both of them. But before we get into the history of it, let's take a moment to explain what driveline is. Founded by Kyle Bodie in 2012, driveline is a baseball training facility, but it's really more than that. It's also a science facility, a biomechanics lab. They're known for helping pitchers throw harder, but they're more than that too. And Major League pitcher Trevor Bauer is probably their best known advocate, but their reach is larger than that and continues to grow. They've had several employees take jobs with Major League teams, and they work closely with some organizations, including the Texas Rangers. One very basic way to describe the driveline mission is to ask the question why, as in, yes, this pitcher might have an electric arm, but why? This pitcher may have an explosive fastball, a killer slider. Why is that? Kyle wasn't content to take any of these things at face value. He wanted to know why. If you could answer that question, maybe you could apply it to other athletes. Maybe you could dig into the science and data analysis to build better baseball players. I'll let Cole explain. It's like a, it's a data-driven way to approach baseball. Um, and basically everything that they conduct at driveline is recorded, studied, and then, you know, they can draw conclusions off that. They don't just, they don't just do the eye test or just watch someone throw and say, Hey, that has good, that guy has good mechanics. They hook them up to a, a biomechanics, uh, in a biomechanics lab, they have them throw, and then they can actually tell them for fact, like as a fact, like this is what you do well, this is what you do bad. And that's kind of like, that's a really, really wide lens of what they do. I mean, it's very specific. Almost some of it is like a little too uh, advanced for me to even understand. Um, but the, from the baseball side of things, I mean, they're known for like weighted balls and getting guys to throw hard, but they're, but they're a lot more, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. And there's a lot more things they focus on than that. When you go back and look at how Cole got to where he is today, you can understand why he's such a strong believer in what driveline does. Driveline was there for Cole at the beginning. They helped him in junior college when he had just converted from a shortstop to a soft-tossing submarine pitcher to transform him again, this time into the -the over-the-top flamethrower he is today. They helped him train and work his way back from Tommy John surgery after he blew his arm out as a college senior. And they still help him today. If you add it all up, he's probably received more pitching instruction from Driveline than he has from any other person or organization. Driveline's kind of all I've ever known. So I've really never, you know, outside of college pitching coaches and, um, you know, now at the Rangers, um, I've never really had much other coaching than Driveline or, or any other thought process. That's interesting in itself. But how it all started is even more interesting because how it all started involves, ironically, a little bit of magic, just a different kind. Cole has long been a baseball player, but he's also a card player. He's actually an accomplished poker player, which we'll get into in a future episode, and he loves the card game Magic the Gathering. Magic is a strategic trading card game that really exploded in popularity over the last decade, boasting about 20 million players worldwide. Cole is one of them, and he swears by the game, which makes him a bit of an outlier in the baseball world. The fact that I play Magic, I mean, I'm probably one of one in the minor leagues. Definitely a different crowd than uh, than mo- you know, than a baseball you know locker room. If you go to like a Magic tournament, uh, it's an awesome game. I'll I'll stand by that forever. <laughs> As it turned out, Kyle Bodie also loved Magic and baseball, and this is what led to their initial connection. My really good friend on my t- on the Pierce team, Lee Larson's dad was renting out the an addict an addict of a of a warehouse to Kyle Bodie, and Lee had kind of got talked to him and was like, "Hey, I have this friend who I think you'd like. He plays Magic and also plays baseball. Like, I think you'd like him." So I was like, "Cool." So uh, I drive down to Puyallup from Lakewood and I walk into this attic and introduce myself to Kyle, and then we just sit and talk for like an hour. You know, we talk about baseball and Magic. When their conversations turned to baseball, Cole told Kyle about his efforts as a recently converted shortstop at Pierce College. 
He told him how his arm was sore all the time. Kyle asked him about it, then offered to let him try out some gear, a machine called a Mark Pro, which pulsates a sore muscle over and over again, promoting blood flow. This was a pretty new device back in 2013, but you see them all over clubhouses today. Kyle told Cole he could come use the device as much as he wanted, free of charge. So I started driving to Puyallup every day to use this Mark Pro. And uh, every day it was just Kyle working in, a, in an attic, training two or three kids that would come and go. And we just started talking and, you know, we first became friends before he was, you know, anything else to me. We, we would just talk about mostly me just listening to him tell stories about pro ball. And he was, um, you know, working as like a, a freelance like scout for the Astros. And he was at around that time, he was turning in reports on some high school arms that, you know, cause the Astros had the first overall pick that year. And, um, you know, he was just, he would talk about that and other stories. And I would just listen and we, we became pretty close to that. And then once my elbow got better, it was like, well, can you just tell me like what you do here? You know, I, you know, cause I really had no sense of direction as a pitcher other than my pitching coaches at Pierce. And, you know, they did a really good job with me, but I, I've always said that they did a significantly better job with me, like from the mental side of the game, like kind of, you know, getting me mentally tough and understanding the ups and downs. Whereas driveline kind of put in a really good foundation for how I actually throw a ball. That summer, Cole switched over from being a submarine pitcher to a more traditional over-the-top delivery. He focused on throwing harder, on building velocity. One of the ways driveline trained him to do this was to have him throw heavier baseballs. They called them plyo balls. Cole says it trains your body to throw more efficiently. He explains it by using an analogy. For instance, to, to pick up a pencil, it's really easy. You can bend down, stand on one leg, have your eyes closed. You can pick it up really easily. But if you were to pick up, say, a 100-pound weight, you have to squat, use your legs. Your body has to be efficient to lift it. So he says throwing with different weighted balls has a similar effect with your arm. The method was effective, and Cole now throws in the mid to high 90s, and he still works with weighted baseballs in his throwing program today. A normal ball weighs 5 ounces. Cole has worked with balls of varying weights up to 11 ounces. He doesn't throw them a ton, but works them into his training. He says they actually put less stress on his arm, which helps him get more value out of his training program. With a light ball, your arm can move inefficiently and still get the, still throw the ball to the plate. The heavier the ball is, the more naturally your arm just moves uh, cleaner. And that's basically what, um, again, it's, it's much more scientific than that, but that's like the idea behind throwing heavier balls. And that's kind of like all I've ever known. Like I said, once I started pitching, I was at driveline doing that. And I mean, people like scouts, coaches in the org, they, they, the one thing I've heard is that I have a really efficient arm pass and like it's very clean and very um, ideal. And I mean, that, that's not by accident, by design. That's by design. That statement could almost be a catchphrase for driveline. And it brings us back to the all-star break. Cole went back into driveline to train, to work on his pitches. Specifically, he wanted to improve his curveball. That's where we bring in Rob Hill. Rob is a former college pitcher. He met Cole in 2014 when both were working out at driveline. Now he's an employee there. His title is Manager of Technical Development. Uh, essentially, uh, it basically means that everything uh, in the realm of pitch design, uh, from the technology to the implementation of the training to managing and teaching the other trainers is kind of uh, my domain of expertise currently at Driveline. Pitch design is kind of a multi-pronged thing. In a broad sense, it's about creating an arsenal of weapons that best fit a particular athlete. Then, in a specific sense, it's about shaping those weapons, those pitches, to maximize their effectiveness based on the athlete's abilities and mechanics. For example, Cole has a very over-the-top delivery, and he naturally throws his fastball with a lot of backspin, giving it what they call ride. It resists gravity, can even have the effect of appearing to rise, 
Therefore, it makes more sense for him to throw a four-seam fastball, which tends to be straighter and harder, than say a two-seamer, which has less backspin and tends to have a sinking action. A pitcher with less backspin in a different arm slot, for example, maybe a three-quarter delivery, might be more inclined to throw a two-seam fastball. When Rob is working to improve a pitcher's arsenal, there are a couple of key tools he uses. One of these is called an Edgertronic camera. It shoots high-quality, super slow-mo video, so you can get a really good look at how a ball comes off a pitcher's hand. We've got some Edgertronic images of coal throwing on the website, so you can check those out at RaisedSports.com. The other key tool they use is called a Rapsodo. It's a pitch tracker. On the Driveline website, they call the Rapsodo a blended radar optical unit and can tell you all sorts of things about the physics of a pitch, such as how fast the ball is spinning, the axis of its rotation, and the speed and break of the pitch. Use Edgertronic and Rapsodo together, and you can see how the pitcher is throwing the ball and also get a very detailed look at what happens once the ball leaves his hand. After you see the results, you can have the pitcher adjust his mechanics to change the results of the pitch. Rob explains. And so it does that by, uh, it in first movement by taking uh, pictures of the pitch as it comes in, and then it gives you a readout, and then you're kind of able to manipulate uh, how you want the pitch to move uh, by using that readout that it gives you, as well as using the camera to kind of show the athlete, like, okay, you know, your hand in this position is making this appear on the rep soto, which is not what we want. So let's try this. Let's try this grip. And then let's see what the rep soto tells us. We'll see what the video tells us. And kind of bridging those two together to, to give uh, the guy a full understanding of really what he's, uh, what he's doing with his pitches. Cole and Rob go back. They work well together, efficiently. They speak the same language. So Cole went into driveline and said he needed to improve his curve. It was too slurvy, he said. That is, it was looking like a mix between a curve and a slider. Cole wanted it to have more of a classic curveball look, with a straight 12-6 to 6 vertical break. As we mentioned before, he believed this would be a better complement for the high-in-the-zone fastball that had proven so effective for him. So Cole starts out by throwing fastballs, and everything looks fine. Then he goes to the curve, and it's pretty much what he expected. Too much slurvy horizontal break to it, not enough top-down vertical action. With the amount of spin he was putting on the ball, he should have had more break. He wasn't getting that efficiency out of the spin that he should have been. So he and Rob went to work. And so it was, from there, it was essentially like, okay, let's look at the grip. All right, okay, let's try this grip. Let's try this feel. What are you thinking about when you're throwing it? Uh, how? And then like, okay, let's try this grip, throw one. Okay, let's try this feel with that grip, throw one. Okay, we're not getting where we want it to be. And then basically just iterating on that sort of a process until we find the shape that we're looking for uh, and it's repeatable and it's comfortable for him. And uh, it, was, it was actually pretty cool because a guy like Cole who really knows what he's like looking for, he's able to throw one. It looks great to me. He said that feels awesome and it's within the velocity range that like we wanted it to be. So, uh, and then from there, it's just, you know, continue to, to rep that out, uh, make sure that he can repeat it. After a few hours' work over a couple of days, Cole had his curveball in a much better place. It was a productive all-star break. Mission accomplished. And Cole looked forward to having an improved weapon to complement his fastball in the second half. Just how good a combination could this be? Well, Driveline has a tool to measure that, too. Basically, they can input the data from all of the pitches a guy throws, and it spits out a number. They call it an arsenal score and it compares the pitcher to big leaguers, like this pitch is major league average, this pitch is above major league average, and the entire arsenal is average or below or whatever. I asked Rob what Cole's arsenal score was, and because it's proprietary, he couldn't tell me. But he did say this. Basically, uh, like those, those two pitches that we talked about, just like the fastball and the curveball together alone, would put him in the, point, in the, in the top uh, like .001% of uh, big league arsenal just because of those two pitches together. So, like, the fastball by itself is uh, about average, but the breaking ball and the fastball in conjunction with one another make his overall arsenal, like, very, very elite. This more or less lines up what Texas Rangers scout Derek Tucker said about Cole. I think he's got two pitches that play at the big league level. I think the, the curveball's come a long way in the past year. Um, 
I just saw some video of it about his last two outings where it looks like it's really developing. And that's basically like on my draft report, I said the one concern I have was his ability to spin the baseball. Um, and uh, he's obviously worked extremely hard on getting to a point where he's got a viable pitch to play. Having ironed out some kinks in his curveball, Cole was ready to return to down east and eager to get to the second half, feeling renewed confidence. This is what Kyle Bodie and the driveline folks have done for Cole, dating back to his conversion from shortstop to pitcher as a junior college freshman, through his move to Division I, through his comeback from Tommy John surgery, and on into his pro career. It's shown him what he can do despite not possessing what you might call a traditional baseball story. How he's a genius, you know, unbelievably smart, and he works harder than, you know, anybody that I've ever met. And, you know, he, everything that he puts out is backed up by fact and, and data. A lot of these pitching facilities that train pitchers just eye test a lot of things and have a lot of old school, you know, uh, rooted ways of of going about pitching, and Kyle didn't have that because he he wasn't he didn't grow up in the baseball world. I mean, he was just a he was a a gambler and who read Moneyball one day and fell in love with the idea that you can develop players and not you know nobody's just full, you know yeah, certain guys are just born with it, but there are guys that can come from nothing and pitch at the highest level, and that's what he kind of set out to do. Was his mission is. I guess Driveline has a lot of missions, but but specifically what started Driveline was the idea that baseball players can be trained and created, not just they're just born with a 100-mile-an-hour arm. Being born with a 100-mile-per-hour arm, that would be magical. But this, this is just science. Thank you for listening to the Raised Sports Podcast. This episode was written and produced by me, Bob Harkins. Music credits go to Broke for Free, and the theme song comes from DL Sounds. Special thanks, as always, to Cole Uvula for letting me follow along with him throughout the 2019 season, and also to Rob Hill and Derek Tucker for their contributions to this episode. For more on Kyle Bodie and Driveline, check out drivelinebaseball.com. We've also got some super slow-mo video of Cole pitching on our website, RaisedSports.com. Coming up in Episode 6, Cole and the Wood Ducks head into the second half of the season with a pretty heavy-duty road trip on the schedule. Cole details what it's like on the minor league bus and how his body has to adjust to the travel. This far into the season, it's never going to feel 100%. I mean, it's just, just not... So with stuff like that, I mean, yeah, it sucks. It's like maybe long bus ride and you got to pitch that, that day after the long bus ride. Not You don't get like a solid night's sleep, but, you know, if you're not feeling your best, you, you still you know, have to go out there and produce. So something I just try to take it at face value and just roll with it. I'm Bob Harkins, and this is Raised Sports. Thanks for listening.